Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So we're working our way through of your list of viewer requested questions. As ever, it seems to be growing faster than we can possibly do them. And the questions are getting more and more complex, which is cool, but difficult. And today's question is about uh, communications. This is all from one guy and we're all going to try and sew it up in one video if we can. One, what's the max range for non-radar signals like VHF, UHF, data link, and ATC? Two, do obstacles like mountains interfere with these signals? In DCS world we're talking about. Three, does antenna orientation matter? Unsure which modules have directional antennas for these items. Uh, sorry, let me get that. Similar functionality exists for things like RWR and Hornet, which has a blind spot. Are some signals omnidirectional while others depend on antenna direction? Five, does signal range actually go 3D or is it just 2D? No slant range into account. Six, do mobile command posts, AWACSs, etc. relay signals? Brackets, AWACS do if the fighter has data link. Haven't tested ground units slash EWR sites. So there is a lot of big questions in there. They are all based on radio communication. So we're going to try and first understand these questions. Then we need to talk about how we're going to go and test them. Then we're going to go and test them in the DCS world. Let's just try and take this logically. Uh, it's going to be a big video, I guess. So just uh, go and get a coffee, get a tea, get your Wikipedia out, and we'll just go through it step by step. So question one, what does the what is the max range for non radar signals like VHF, UHF, data link and ATC. So that's so that up first of all. So VHF is just radio analog radio communications. VHF means very high frequency. So we're just talking about the frequency band here and oh it's a while since I studied this. 1182225. It it varies with different coalitions and stuff exactly what the frequency band for VHF is. It's about 1182225 megahertz. UHF ultra high frequency about 225 to about 400 megahertz is the frequency. And ATC, I'm guessing he means air tra traffic control. That is just exactly, it means exactly the same thing. Air tra traffic control will work in VHF or UHF. Within these two, there are two different types of modulation. And that is, the modulation means how the data, bear in mind, these are not digital, these are analog, these are pre-digital. So how is the information actually carried within these frequency bands? And it can be carried with amplitude modulation, where it modulates the amplitude to carry the actual information, or FM, frequency modulation, where it can modulate the frequency to carry the actual information in the signal. So that, that, and that are basically all just the same, They're just slight variations. And each of them can have AM and FM. Generally speaking, FM is used actually slightly lower than what we would consider VHF. It's still considered VHF, but for FM, I think it's about 30 megahertz, maybe 20, up to about 90, depending on your coalition. So that was where you'd use FM for VHF. For AM VHF, it tends to be a 1182, about 225. UHF tends to be AM only, but you can use UHF FM in DCS world. And in terms of looking at range, it's, so if we look at this kind of theoretically, what is a uh, what would a VHF transmitter be? It would be a transmitter and it would transmit energy, it would transmit radiation in the form of photons. It would shoot photons at the speed of light, pretty much. And in terms of range, it, theoretically, those photons would charge to the end of the universe assuming they haven't been intercepted and essentially go on infinite in reality it works a little bit differently let's assume that this is a vhf omnidirectional transmitter so it's sending these photons out in all directions well the further away you get from the source the weaker the signal gets because they're you know dispersing the less photons you are collecting on your receiver and as well as that photons are being intercepted or energy is being intercepted along the way the signal is getting weaker as it, it as it hits solid obstacles so in reality the signal is weaker the further you are from the source and you all know this because if you go and get a walkie talkie and get further and further away from someone even if there's nothing really intercepting the signal, then it'll keep getting weaker. And the actual range that you can actually pick the signal up is going to depend on so many factors, like, for instance, weather. Weather will intercept that radiation. What wattage, what's the power of the original signal? What is the processing filtering capability of the receiver? You know, how low a signal can it receive, filter, and amplify. And I'm just going through this to show how complicated this thing is in real life. How complicated it will be in D DCS, I don't know. And then you've got to start off thinking about real life problems that we're trying to use this on a planet and you need a line of sight. So if you're on the ground with a walkie-talkie or an aeroplane on the ground and you're trying to talk to someone who's 100 miles away, well, he's 
bent around the globe. You can't get a line of sight. You need a line of sight for radio signal. So is that model in DCS? I've already done a test. Is the DCS world, the maps, round like the Earth? No, they're not. They're flat. And there are some good reasons why they model them flat. It's just a lot easier to build a game on a flat surface. But do they model in other ways? Do they simulate curvature of the Earth? Probably we'll find yes, because they do with um, line of sight and stuff like that. They have some clever trickery in the background to simulate that the Earth would be curved. But then you can get even more complicated. And again, we'll see if this kind of thing is modeled well. The reality is, if you look with your eyes, I've got a video literally on this coming out in a few days, if you look with your eyes at the horizon, your eyesight, and this sounds weird, but actually bends around the curvature of the Earth a bit, which is why you get weird mirage signals when you're on the seas looking at ships. Your eyes, the, the light, again, light's just photons, energy, radiation, actually bends around the curvature of the Earth to a certain degree, and that is because of the temperature and the density changes of air. And radio signals, interestingly, do that even more. They bend around the Earth even more than light radiation. And as well as that, something an even bigger deal. Everything we're looking at here is what we call short range communications. If you go and fly an MI8 in DCS, which was designed before satellite communication, you've actually got a long range radio. You've got several radios, but including a long range radio. And a long range radio can go right, not right around the Earth, but quite a far way around the Earth. And it does that by firing signals up, communication signals up, bouncing off the ionosphere and back down towards the Earth. So you can go around the Earth like that and uh, talking to people hundreds of miles away. It's an incredibly interesting area of study. Sorry to drag on about that, but I'm just giving an idea of the vast plethora of variables we've got here. How difficult this is going to be able to actually test and assess in DCS, but we'll see. That moves us on to data link, RC. Data link's a little bit different. Now, the first thing to understand about data link is, well, let's confirm what we're going to do. We're going to do link 16. Link 16 is the most prevalent data link in DCS. What do we got, RC? We've got F18, F16. Technically, the F15 should be using it, but it doesn't have it. Uh, 14 could hook into it, I think. I think it can. And it's important to understand if this is a digital or analog. So VHF, UHF, and ATC in DCS in the time periods we've got are all analog signals, okay? It doesn't send any ones and zeros, it's, it's an analog signal. So we believe that Link 16 was started in 1994, which is kind of a, mm, a difficult area because it's somewhere between analog and digital communications. Now, D uh, RC thinks it's digital, don't you, RC? And what's your justification for that? It's, a T it's based on a TDMA system, which is a digital system. Uh, and the interesting thing about that is digital communications will have a longer range per wattage. So if you're kicking out 10 watts on an analog and 10 watts on a digital transmitter, because the way digital works, it's a lot easier to, at the receiver end, to filter out. It's all about filtering. Much easier to filter out noise for a digital system. You can adjust the wattage in DCS to keep everything fair. Two, do obstacles like mountains interfere with these signals? So that's easy. We put a, we put a F-16 behind a, um, a mountain and try and communicate with it. So that's just an easy thing. In reality, it, it can be a little more complicated than that. The fact is that signals like to not just go in straight lines and disappear when they hit something. The reality is that they bounce off things. They bounce off ground, they bounce off water, they bounce off planes, they bounce off and, and reflect around in mountains at the speed of light or near enough. So we're going to see... I'll try and get a feel of how realistically that's modeled. We'll, we'll try and keep it simple, actually, I think it's probably best. If you go behind a mountain, do you lose the signal? Probably, yes, we'll find, but we'll see. Does antenna orientation matter? This is a, an interesting one. Now, in real life, just generally speaking, not aviation per se, but most communications transmitters are not omnidirectional. It's very inefficient to have an omnidirectional transmitter because it's, you know, if you're simple, if you imagine you're kicking out all your photons, if you send them out in all directions, then that at a certain wattage, then it's just less efficient. There's less photons to be intercepted by a receiver. If you channel a the same wattage, the same amount of photons, but in a very small channel, then obviously it's going to be much easier. More, more energy is going to reach the, trans, uh, the receiver and therefore It'll be easier to uh, to filter that and receive it. It's my understanding, just from roughly testing DCS, that they are all omnidirectional. Is that realistic in aviation? To be honest, absolutely no idea. 
Personally, I wouldn't think it is because, again, it just seems massively inefficient, but I'm not sure. And we've got brackets. I'm unsure which modules have directional antennas for those similar functionality existing things that are doubly on point. Now, the interesting thing about this is if you go and, because I have a particular interest of radios in DCS World, and you can do things, and I'm trying to think of an example as a talk. I think uh, L39 and planes like, I think it's the L39 and a few others, where you actually have manual control over your aerial an aerial which will probably be used as a transmitter and a receiver and you can actually bend them and due to mm, logic i don't really understand but i believe it's similar type of logic to that shows how a phased array transmitter and receiver could work in that and how you can change your radio direction by a phased array also by bending and changing the shape of your aerial in your plane you can change the direction at which it transmits and receives is that modeled in DCS world? No, it literally says in the manuals when I was reading about them, none of this is modeled in DCS world. You can move your antenna or twist it around, bend it, but it has no difference. So that is almost going to be a point towards the fact that everything is omnidirectional. Also, uh, in your air, all of your aeroplanes in DCS world, you can choose whether to uh, use your upper transmitter or lower transmitter. Sorry, I keep saying transmitter, I mean aerial. Your upper aerial, your lower aerial, or both together. And um, in, in, on a real aeroplane, that makes a difference to transmission and receiving. In DCS, that's not modelled in all of the flight manuals uh, I've read, which I've read them all now. It says that is not modelled. So almost certainly that anecdotal evidence is going to say that everything is omnidirectional, but we will go and and test that out that kind of answers question four as well are some signals omnidirectional while others depend on antenna direction because of what we were just talking about there almost certainly everything is going to be omnidirectional and i'm going to try and find something that's not directional the only thing in dcs that's directional radiation based i think is is a radar a search type radar uh, next does the signal range actually go 3d or is it 2d uh, it's almost it's a really easy one to test that is because the mountain test will um, test that for us if he's shielded by the mountain and the signal goes dead and then if he goes up above the mountain and the signal goes live then we pretty much confirmed that these radio signals work by slant range uh, and not just a 2d i mean technically the question is does the range go 3d or 2d probably won't be able to test that exact question but does these radio signals work on a slant range basis, at least in terms of line of sight? Yes, almost certainly they will do. Six, do mobile command post AWACS's relay signals? AWACS do to fire test data link. Yes, absolutely they can. So you could have a fighter, say 100 nautical from an AWACS, and that can contribute to that link 16 network in the AWACS. And then that can then be sent on to another fighter, another 100 miles in the other direction. And that is how that you can send data, transfer data. But um, in terms of comms, if we if we were looking at comms, no, it couldn't. It, so you couldn't, for instance, send comms from my plane to an AWACS and have them boost that another 100 miles or another 200 or 300 miles to a fighter. It could only, at least at the moment, uh, things are due to change in DCS, but at the moment, it can only be data link specific information and also command mobile command post so an example that i'm thinking of with the set say we've got a patriot site and we've got a one times patriot battery over here then 50 miles over here we've got uh, one times ice patriot icc the intelligent uh, the nerve center and that can then communicate information onto another battery that's another 50 miles in a different direction so that kind of thing is possible at least so that's the cyber babble i hope that's made some sort of sense now i guess we're going to go and test it let's go and set ourselves up in the dcs world we've got our transmitter is going to be us today our receiver is going to be the stennis and we've chosen stennis because i think it's going to give us the best data because we can go over the horizon on the sea and be assured that there's no mountains that will get in the way we can go behind hills here to do our line of sight checks and um, it's just a good known working entity we've got the f-16 that we'll be trying as our primary uh, because the radio works fine just in case because it's new or whatever just in case we're going to also try the f-18 uh, which i know works properly regards our options those are options we'll have note that easy communications turn off which i believe bypasses things like line of sight and range the radio that we'll be using if you want to look up the power and whatnot we're going to be using this today com2 a vhf the anarc 222 vhf radio our chap i've set him to 126.5 am and i can think i can see him there so first we're going to try five miles no line of sight problems be very easy so we remember how to work this uh com 
two, got 126.50, enter, uh, got the button to use the A and ARC 222, which is that there, that, there it is, uh, ATC, Stennis, inbound. Okay, let's come back to us. So, five miles, no obstruction, Angel 6. Next, we're going to do over here. There's a lovely big mountain range there. So we're going to be 20 miles away from the target. We're not going to have line of sight and we'll be on the deck. So I've tested this a few times before. It's always uh, worked in the past in that. That's Sarsi practicing the F-18. Sorry. Um, was that a control or was that without line of sight, Sarsi? That's kind of above the mountains. Right. So the F-18 works above the mountains. Now you go below the mountains and try. I'm going to dive down. Make sure you're bought. Make sure you're bought. Otherwise, he won't answer. So we can hear RC making the calls on the 126.5. Dive over here. So if you see where I am now, 20 miles away. I've clearly got no line of sight of him. Let's try contacting him again. All the same variables. I'm making a call, RC. Oh dear, he's called me. He was a bit quiet and I've got my COM2 turned up, but he did reach me. So let's have a pause and just have a little think about that RC. So he has reached me and I've reached him through that big mountain range there at 20 miles. I mean, I just don't know enough about how radios work, but what it's saying is that either it's just ignoring that mountain range there or it's clever than that and it's bouncing the you know the radio waves are bouncing through these various uh, mountains and reaching him or bouncing up from the sky and down and reaching him next thing to try is me further out with no line of sight so i'm going to go out 50 miles here and have no line of sight due to the mountain one thing to note is it seemed he seemed a lot quieter than last time yeah i can hear static when i when you yeah. were talking to him yeah the only thing is, I've lost TACAN signals before because mountains have been in the way. Well, I didn't hear anything. I can hear him talking back to you. I can't hear him. That's interesting. What were you... Where were you... Where are you? On the other side of the mountain range. Roger. Your distance is... 30 miles. So 30 miles, interestingly, he got the message because I could hear him talking back. But you couldn't hear him, right? Right. <sighs> this is weird. Try again. Roger, I'm going to try 30 miles. Are you on the deck? Yep. Copy, I'm listening. Okay, here we go. Now I hear him. I hear him as well, but it's fuzzy. Yep. He's definitely static. He a lot of static. Yeah. Well, he got back to you, RC. Um, oh. Okay, I'm going to try now, RC. Um, we're going to go. I got it back, but it's almost impossible to hear now. I heard you. I can't hear him. Hmm, weird. So, that's a really hard one to judge. I knew it was going to be complicated. I knew it couldn't just be simple. Well, we've got to be careful here because you've got a different radio to me, so you've got a different receiver and a different transmitter. But you're only 24 miles away, and you've got some big mountains ahead of you. There's so many ways they could have done this that it's really hard to tell. Line of sight does clearly play a difference. I tell you what, we better quickly check the aspect. What aspect are you, RC? 
I think I'm heading towards. Yeah, you're heading towards it. Yeah, it's not going to get any better than that, is it? You're heading towards him. So, no, no I don't think we need to test that. So, there are situations where the terrain will block. So, we're not really talking about curvature of the earth at this distance, but we're talking about uh, mountains. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly southeast and just do distance and aspect and altitude and no terrain. And you continue testing and try and draw some data, useful data. Oh, I know a useful one I can do. Right, I'm going to go 33 miles away still, but, and the same aspect, but I'm going to have no um, terrain blocking in the way, so I'm going to go at high altitude and see if that makes a difference. Do you want me to stay in the mountains or do you want me to do distant? Go up, be exactly where you were on the same aspect, but above the mountains and see if that's okay. a lot clearer. Luckily, I've got a superior jet to you, so I can just go straight up past it. You can't do that with your weedy little engines. <laughs> I can hear her, and she's a little static, even yeah. not bad. I wonder if I find it's... Yeah, right. Are you above the mountains when you did that? Yep. Roger. Uh, I'm just checking I've got line of sight on this dude. Pretty sure I've got... Okay. Oh, I see him now. Yep. So I'm going to just make sure it's the same aspect. I'm going to make the call now, RC. Uh... Lovely. So, right, I, what I did, Oz, is I went up uh, the same aspect pretty much, the same, the same distance, but I went up to high altitude and it's clear as anything. I could hear it really easily, hear the signal easily, there was no muffle. So it seems that when you go terrain in the way, it still works, the comms at least, but it just gets muffled, doesn't it, and staticky. Yep. That was pretty... And that's real life. Oh, Roger. Okay, so I'm just going to abort that. Right, I'm going to do distance now and no uh, line of sight problems. I just need to write that down. Not this low, anyways. And these are just basic analog radios, aren't they? There's no, there's no satcom. Yep. There's nothing, you know. Yeah, nothing special. A lot of static. Well, it's fine for me, but I'm not in the mountains. All right, I'm just gonna keep going away. And 50 miles away, high and fast, no line of sight problems. Gonna do a call. I know it's gonna be fine, but I'm just checking. Perfect, as we'd expect. I could hear you fine, but they're really static. They're yeah, well, I'm up. The, well, that, that makes sense because I'm up high in the air and they're down low. So you, we, I have yep. a line of sight to you. 100 miles at high and fast. So let's give it a go. We should have no problems. Uh, to see, just. I could hear him broken, but hear him fine. Okay. Okay, 150 miles. Two hundred miles more or less. Stand by. Aha. And pause. So we've got to two hundred miles, uh, and we are on a cold aspect at Angels thirty seven. Run of sight, yes, and we've got no reply. Right. So what we do now is lose altitude, head back and what we can do is start in fact what we need to do is just head back at this altitude and see when we pick him up again all right back return 180 miles from contact him oh hey got him back okay what we're going to do next is to see if we can get him down at low altitude Uh 
Ah, how interesting. So it was too muffled to even hear that, and that was at 160 hot angels zero. See when we pick him up. So one thing I've just determined I'll see is that altitude, with assuming no line of sight in terms of problems in terms of terrain, altitude makes a big difference. All I've got to find out now. Oh, it does. Yeah, at one because uh, 180 miles I can pick him up um, high, but 160 miles I can't pick him up low. Okay, let's try that. 120 miles. Hear him a tiny bit better. 100 miles. Five. Okay, um, I've got to quickly check if an aspect changes anything. I don't think it will. Probably not, since no, there's no, it's all up in the direction. Right? Yeah. Play it again. Ah, one more test, just to double and triple check that. We'll just head out to 100 miles and that's what's done, I'll see. Final check. Okay, it's going to be about five. Right! I know that probably looks incredibly boring, and it was, but I think we've got all the data we need. And I'm going to head into Windows now and look at the data. Time to analyze the data. These are the data points that we've got, and hopefully we can answer the question pretty much from these data points. What is the max range for non-radar signals, VHF, UHF, data link, and ATC? And the answer is, there's not really such thing. Uh, let's see, you do want VHF, yeah? Well, it depends what particular VHF radio you've got in that aeroplane. So an AN, ARC, 222, and what wattage that puts out in that particular radio, which is going to be different to an F-15 with a different radio, VHF radio with a different output, which is going to be different to an F-18C with a different radio with a different output. Fortunately, it's going to be lots of these answers. It's going to depend on everything. And it's also going to depend on ignoring speed, terrain, distance, and whatnot. It's also going to depend on the receiver radio. So the guy who's receiving it in the aircraft tower is going to have a different receiver with different noise filtering capabilities and amplification abilities than an F-16, than an L-39, than a Hawk, than whatever so it's an incredibly complicated question to answer same thing with uhf which is you know it's just just an, it's just a, exactly the same but a different frequency band atc basically the same and the atc tower is going to have a different receiver and transmitter to whatever is in your plane a different wattage and so on data link we actually didn't actually do any testing with data link but it's going to be basically the same so there's no set answer you can't just say vhf goes 100 miles uhf goes 50 miles it just doesn't exist unfortunately so regards to those ranges here we have the range of our f16 from our receiver the receiver well the receiver and the transmitter if you like was on the aircraft carrier and on my aircraft so here's the range between us here's the angels i made the call at here's the aspect i was facing in relation to the carrier here's whether there was terrain blocking the signal or not a lot of obvious mountains i'm talking about and here was the signal strength when it got back to me so five miles away was just my control test with nothing in the way and a hot aspect or a flanking aspect i got a perfect signal 10 out of 10. When I was 20 miles away and I was on the deck and it was a flanking aspect and there was a mountain in the way, I got 8 out of 10. It was a bit fuzzy and a bit quiet. When I was 35 miles and there was uh, angels 0 and it was a cold aspect and there was a mountain in the way, it was 5 out of 10. And this seems to be how DCS models it. There is a cutoff range, just a basic cutoff range, that's going to be based on the power of the transmitter and, I guess, the ability of your receiver, uh, which we'll come to later. But... And up until you reach that range, it just gets kind of more and more muffled depending on various uh, figures like this, like angels, like whether there is a mountain in the way, and distance. It's very, very confusing. Next was angels, so angels 35, so the same, sorry, range 35, same range, same aspect, 
but Angel's 22, so nothing blocking us this time, and we get 10 out of 10. So that shows how, otherwise everything being the same, having a terrain block, a mountain in the way, can reduce us from 10 out of 10 to 5 out of 10 in terms of signal quality, signal strength, whatever you want to call it, hearability of that signal. And then we tried 50 miles at very high, Angel's 37, with a cold aspect, no, nothing in the way apart from curvature of the Earth. And we got 10 out of 10, all the way to 150 miles at that, and we got 10 out of 10 there. 200 miles, cold, it just cut off. At that point, the radio just seems to be programmed to cut off with that particular wattage, with that particular receiver, with that particular transmitter. So I turned around and flew back, and at 180 miles, I tried 190 and 180, 180, I got it back at Angels 37 with a hot aspect with no terrain block and I've got 10 out of 10 all of a sudden so it just seems to cut off at that certain point with those parameters. Then I thought okay well let's try low and with a hot aspect and so 160 low hot no terrain block zero. So that shows that if we take these two here that's curvature of the earth getting in the way there or you can call it a terrain block if you like but it's, it's curvature in the earth so basically with let's just treat them as the same even though this one is closer changing my altitude keeping everything else the same i go from signal strength 10 to signal strength nothing at all in fact that negates what i just said about the 200 miles it just being a cutoff that's not actually correct um ignore what i said there there is no cutoff because down here at these different parameters if you like the cutoff was then at 160. So there's not a cast off, it is a graded thing from 10 down to 0. And in that parameter, 0. At 120 bars, on the deck, hot aspect, with no mountain in the way, but just a curvature of the earth, I started picking it up 3 out of 10. At 100 miles, angels uh, 0, hot aspect, with no terrain block, uh, signal strength 5. And then we went to 50 miles and we got it almost 10 out of 10 again, so it kept getting better and better and better. Then what I wanted to do was make sure we compare uh, aspect empirically. So I'd repeated that one and that one, but with a cold aspect and found I got exactly the same. So just to re-answer number one, there is no answer to that. It depends on a whole bunch of variables and there's no cutoff point as such. The, the signal just gets weaker and weaker and weaker until you can't hear it anymore. So there is really no answer to that. It's almost like... Um, uh, trying to determine the turn rate of a of an aircraft you can go and measure it at one certain speed and whatnot but to really understand it you've got to have a proper em chart and, and that's something um, you would need something more like that you would need to really understand these a bit better but at least i've shown you what interferes with that signal and roughly how much it interferes with them two do obstacles like mountain get in the way yes they do they relatively impact the signal strength exactly how it does that we're not sure it seems to almost be the closeness of us to the mountain rather than anything else but i can't find anything solid anything empirical testable there uh, they do just get in the way to an extent i can still bounce that signal over the mountain or however it works does antenna orientation matter doesn't appear to know all the manuals say that it doesn't matter that i've read and we've checked by moving our aircraft at various aspects and assuming that there's no automatic antenna movement which i'm almost certain there is not in any of these aircraft then it doesn't in dcs are some signals omnidirection while others we've not found anything that is not omnidirectional in terms of communication and that includes data link let me know if you can find anything that disagrees with that but as far as i can see that's number four busted five does the signal range actually go 3D and 2D, no, uh, no slant range into account. I'm happy to bust that by saying that because we can go through the, uh, because the mountain has an effect, therefore the it is calculated on slant, because otherwise it wouldn't know, if it wasn't calculated on slant, it wouldn't know that mountain's in the way, and therefore, therefore it wouldn't make the necessary signal adjustments. It doesn't answer the question perfectly, but I can't think of any other way of really answering that question, because altitude that we can get to is so small in comparison to the ranges that we're looking at, you know, hundreds of miles at the end of the day. Um, otherwise, draw your own conclusion from that data there, but um, I think it is 3D and slant range is included. Finally, do mobile command posts, AWACSs, etc. release relay signals? We can't find any evidence of AWACS command posts or anything else relaying signals in DCS. In terms of relaying your communications, all we can find, like we said at the beginning of the movie, is it can transfer the actual data link information for link 16 or link 4 and inter sam again data link information uh, let me know if i need to expand on that any further but i can't really think what else i can do with this anything you can think of adding to that i'll see i don't think it's modeled but uhf 
and VHF signals have different characteristics. So VHF travels further while UHF will be better around obstacles. That's I'm not sure that's model. That's a t yeah, I guess that's a test for another day then, RC. You'd have to do, you'd have to yeah. do this with COM1 then repeat everything again with COM2, I mean, you know, the other way around, right. COM2, which is which would be UHF, and then and it's actually an interesting test to see if it works. But again... Yeah, because uh, the, ge the general rule is the, the lower the frequency, the further it can travel. Watch up. But, yep. um, Roger. You have pitfalls as you get lower. Okay, well, we'll, do, we'll compare different frequency bands another day then. I would be inclined to guess it's not. However, that is a pure guess and it's not based on anything. Right, um, hope that's okay for now and we'll see you later.